Hi, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads. And today I'm gonna to give you a book review of The Painted Drum, which is a book by Louise Erdrich. And it was supposed to be the book that I was gonna read in my 12 Days of Christmas Carol Advent Calendar Challenge, but I ran out of time. If I bump it into February, maybe I'll get a chance to read it. And sure enough, I did, and I'm really happy I did because this ended up being a five-star read for me. First, I wanted to say that Louise Erdrich is an author I've been wanting to read for a while. She's incredibly prolific and she's an indigenous author. And I've read one other of her books, The Roundhouse, which, you know, I liked well enough. I gave it about a three star, maybe something in that range. And I just wasn't really sure what to expect from other books of hers. I know that she writes mostly adult literary fiction, but she does have quite a few middle grade books, like a series, the Birch Bark House series. But The Painted Drum is within this much larger series. And I think you can read each book individually, at least I did, because I think The Painted Drum is actually the last book in the series but I read it and it didn't need any help from anything else as far as I could tell. You're starting with this woman named Faye Trappers and her and her mother have this business where they go to different people's houses, their estates, they assess the value of the items and then they also try and sell the items for these people whose family members have died. So in the beginning of this, Faye is going into this house for the Tatro family. The man of the house has died and he actually was the grandson of an Indian agent for the Ojibwe tribe back quite a few years past. And during the time that he was the Indian agent, he ended up collecting a lot of antiquities and a lot of personal belongings for different members of the tribe through pretty unsavory means, mostly by providing them with alcohol and tobacco in exchange for these items. These were really personal, personal artifacts and things that meant a lot more to the Ojibwe people than of course it would mean to this Indian agent that just collected these things because he was kind of greedy. Faye and her mother actually suspected that these items would be at this house. Because of the grandmother's position within the Ojibwe tribe, they knew some of the history and knew that the Tatros had a lot of antiquities. So when Faye was going there, she was expecting to find these items and she did. And she also found this painted drum, which is way more important than just being a drum. Painted drums are basically alive in a lot of ways and they're created for a specific reason by a specific person. They hold a lot of the spiritual past. Sometimes they actually hold the spirit of a certain person. So through the story, you're actually going into different people's lives, different people who had something to do with the drum. So that's kind of how you start with Faye's perspective, then you go to Bernard's perspective, and you go to another perspective and you kind of go uh, to these different perspectives to kind of follow the life of the drum. I just loved the characters. I felt the characters were so incredible. And one of the things I loved the most about her characters was that when she first introduced them to you, you kind of were thinking, ah, I'm not really sure I like this person. And through their story, as you're following them along, they become so dynamic. They may not necessarily become really good people throughout the story that you're reading them, but you understand different facets of them and you understand the intentions behind the things that they're going through. You understand the causes of the position of their life at the time you're reading. And you actually really, well, I really started to enjoy these characters a lot. Even characters where I really didn't think I was gonna like them because when I first met them, I was kind of appalled by them. In the end, they just, sometimes they grew and they became better people and that was incredible. But it was just the development of the characters. I felt like they became so much more rich and so much more full as you went along so that even though you may have thought they were one thing and they may still be that thing in the end, you can appreciate them a lot more because you know so much more about them. I think that's one of my favorite elements of character development. It's not necessarily, I mean, I like understanding the characters and, and liking them, but I also really like characters that, that change, that grow. Even if it's like devolving, I just, I really like seeing a development in my characters. It, it does something for me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. And another thing I really liked about this was the storytelling. In the very end, you read a little author's note that Louise Erdrich was talking about how she was trying to maintain the stories from the Ojibwe tribe. And she was using actual stories that she had read about within her story. And I thought her incorporation of these stories was so well done. I think that Louise Erdrich's storytelling is some of the best storytelling I have read. And her writing style is so mature and intelligent. I feel like she is a beautiful writer and I never found it boring. I thought that all the characters were interesting. I thought all the scenarios were interesting. Even when it was slow paced, I still was totally riveted. I read this book pretty quickly. It's not a very long book, but I just got through it really fast. Another reason I really liked this was because I actually identified quite a bit with Faye Travers. We're not the same woman. That is for darn sure. We don't have the same personalities, 
but her relationship with her heritage with the Ojibwe tribe was kind of how I feel about my relationship to the Nooksack tribe. There is an extreme amount of respect, but we were raised outside of the heritage. She was raised outside of her heritage because her grandmother was sent away to a boarding school. I was raised outside of the Nooksack heritage because my grandmother kind of ran away when she was 16. <laughs> There's a huge amount of respect and so much that you want to engage with, but the feeling she had about the spirituality of her heritage was kind of similar to how I feel where I have a connection and I feel something there, but kind of feels like you're standing on the outside looking in. The most I got experience with it was when we'd come up for family reunions and visit different family members who were pretty active within the tribe. And then now that I've moved back to Washington where my family and the tribe is, I have somewhat of a connection, but I work for a different tribe and I live on a different reservation. It still is introducing me to a heritage that I didn't grow up with. And so going off on this huge tangent, I know, but that's one thing that I felt a kinship with Faye Travers with. And then I also really identified with her fears and her struggle and her challenges with relationships because she does struggle with relationships, not just with her mother because she does live with her mother. I guess we have that in common. <laughs> also, with the man she's seeing, and I, I'm not seeing a man right now, but she has a lot of fears and a lot of struggles when it comes to relationships and different things have held her back. Different things that have affected her life have held her back from being able to develop these strong relationships with men who could be in her life. I don't necessarily have the same experience she had, but I could relate to a lot of the feelings she was having. So I felt like I identified with Faye quite a bit. And I don't always identify with the characters I'm reading about. It definitely was interesting because I felt an investment in this character. And so those are probably the main reasons why I really liked this book. I know that it didn't necessarily get five star ratings across the board. There were people who definitely thought it was a little boring. I don't, and I didn't. It was a great book for me and I'm so glad I got a chance to read it. Roundhouse didn't necessarily give me the perspective I was hoping for, although I might go back and read it because I read it quite a few years ago. I do have plans to read her middle grade Birch Bark series house and now that I've read this one, I'll probably go and try to read all the books within this series. So that was my review. If you like this, click the like button and subscribe now if you'd like to see more reviews. I'm gonna have another one coming up in a couple days. So check that out. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.